Hi everyone, let us continue with the first chapter of Economics Class 9, the story of village Palampur. And the topic which we are going to discuss today, that is, land is fixed. The major activity in the village Palampur is farming. Around 75% of the people are associated with farming. And their livelihood is dependent on the farm production. But from 1960s, there has been no increase in the agricultural land. Whatever was the land in 1960, it is same. What does this mean? Over the years from 1960s or 1960, there has been increase in the population. The life standard has increased. This means they need more farm production to overcome this. But land is fixed in Palampur. There is no scope of increasing the agricultural land. One of the way of increasing the agricultural production is increasing the agricultural land. If the production comes from 10 hectare of land, we can convert another 10 hectares to have more production. But that is not the case in Palampur. The land is fixed. Now they have to look away. Is there a way that they can grow more from the same land. So is there a possibility they can grow from the same land in the Palampur? Yes, there is. One is multiple cropping. Another is modern farming method. These are the two methods by which they can grow more from the same land. Now let us discuss one by one multiple cropping. Then we will be discussing modern farming methods. Multiple cropping. Before discussing multiple cropping, let us discuss another concept. Majority of the Indian farmers, their agricultural calendar is dependent on rainfall, mainly monsoon. Whenever there will be rainfall, they will be able to cultivate their crop. And there is only one season of that, that is monsoon season. The rest of the year, they don't have any irrigation facility. Once they don't have any irrigation facility, their land is unutilized. They don't cultivate their land. That means they have only one production throughout the year. If there are other places where there is irrigation facilities, for example, Punjab is there, Haryana is there, Western UP is there. The farmers of these places, they have better irrigation facilities. Same is case with the Palampur. They have better irrigation facilities. They have irrigation facilities 24 into 7 throughout the year. Why? They have installed electric run two wells in their fields. How this has benefited them? Now they are not able to cultivate only one crop. They have irrigation facilities throughout the year. This means they can cultivate more than one crop on a piece of land during one year. They are done with one crop. After that, they have availability of irrigation, they can cultivate another, and they can cultivate third crop, and they are doing this. Now, to grow more than a single crop, to grow more than a single crop on a piece of land during one year is termed as multiple cropping. Now, how this multiple cropping has enhanced the production? Simply, earlier, they had the production of just one crop throughout the year. Because of the irrigation facilities, they are able to grow three crops. This means they have production of three crops. Which three crops? During Kharif season, they grow Jawar and Bajra, which is used as cattle feed. During Rabi season, they cultivate wheat. Some of the farmers cultivate third crop as potato. Other few of them also cultivate sugarcane. Now they have production of Jawar, Bajra, wheat, potato. So they are not limited to only one crop. So because of this multiple cropping, they are able to increase the farm production. And this is only possible because they have installed electric run two wells in their fields. And because of that, they have better irrigation facilities. This is one of the way. Now let us come to the second way. That is modern farming methods. Now, what is this modern farming method? 
it is associated with the use of high yielding variety of seeds h y v s high yielding variety of seeds earlier the farmers used to use they used traditional seeds traditional manures and because of traditional ways of the farming because of that what happened there was not that much of farm production but with the passage of time in 1960s what they did they used high yielding variety of seeds these high yielding variety of seeds they are not alone going to increase the farm production they need plenty of water fertilizers pesticides once all is all this is used in a combination high yielding variety of seeds fertilizers pesticides this is used in combination what happens because of this there's increase in the farm production in palampur after the use of high yielding variety of seeds the production of wheat increased from 1300 kg is per hectare to 3200 kg is per hectare so this much was a difference not double but more than double and this was only possible because of the high yielding variety of seeds and these seeds we are first introduced in the states of punjab haryana and western up and this bought a revolution in the production especially in rice and wheat and this was then termed as green revolution so what is green revolution it's actually the use of these high yielding variety of seeds mainly for two crops that is rice and wheat first it was introduced in these states punjab haryana western up so these are the two ways of increasing the farm production from the same land one is multiple cropping another is modern farming methods the next topic is will the land sustain or in simple words negative impacts of modern farming methods or negative impacts of green revolution the question can be anything from these three headings so we are going to discuss the negative impacts of modern farming methods point number 1 because of this the use of these high yielding variety of seeds fertilizers pesticides there has been major negative impacts on the soil the first one is loss of soil fertility there has been reduction or somewhere there has been complete loss of soil fertility it has degraded to a very extent because of the excessive use of fertilizers there are certain microscopic small organisms which are present in the soil these fertilizers the excessive use of fertilizers have killed them that has reduced the soil fertility point number 2 we know this that for modern farming methods we need more and more water more and more water is being extracted from the ground water using electric run two wells so once water is pumped at a faster pace than what it is being recharged we are using more water than the pace it is being recharged naturally what happens there is depletion in the ground water level so year after year the ground water level is decreasing 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 and it has let small farmers out of the farming they are not in a position to dig the deeper 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 wells they don't have that much of money so there are two consequences one is depletion of water table another is there is impact on the small farmers third point is water pollution excessive fertilizers pesticides insecticides are used these fertilizers insecticides they mix up with water once they mix up with this water they infiltrate downwards into the ground water now the water is not clean it's carrying fertilizers pesticides insecticides with it it's dissolved in this water and that water mix with the ground water once it mix with the ground water it's polluting the ground water if it's not mixing with the ground water it's moving as a surface runoff it will reach to any water body 
just like lakes, rivers, ponds. And it is again going to take these fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides with it and polluting those water bodies. Point number four. Cost of cultivation has increased. For example, this year a farmer has used fertilizers and there was, he has used 1 kg of fertilizers and the production was of 10 kg of rice, for example, a small plot of land. 1 kg fertilizers, 10 kg rice. These fertilizers, what will happen? They reduce the soil fertility slowly, slowly, slowly. So there will be reduction in the soil fertility. Next year, to get same 10 kgs of rice, now the farmer is not going to use only 1 kg of fertilizers, but he will use or she will use more than 1 kg. That means year after year, the fertility of the soil is decreasing, but at the same time, they have to use more and more fertilizers to get the same produce. It simply means the cost of cultivation has increased or it is increasing year by year. Last point. The use of modern farming method has increased the salinity of the soil. Excessive use of fertilizers have led to increase in the salinity of the soil. So these are the five points which we have discussed. Loss of soil fertility, point number one. Point number two, water pollution. Point number three, depletion of groundwater. Fourth, cost of cultivation has increased. Fifth, increase in the salinity. So these are negative impacts of modern farming methods. So our next topic is how is land distributed among the farmers of Palampur? Simply the distribution of the agricultural land in the Palampur. The land among the farmers in Palampur is distributed unequally. There are the farmers who have big plots of land or there are the farmers who have very small marginal plots of the land. As you know, there are 450 families in Palampur. Out of these 450 families, 150 families, they don't have any land. They are landless and they work as farm laborers. 150 families, they are landless and they work as farm laborers. Then you have another 240 families in Palampur. They have land less than two hectares. And this, these 240 families, they are called as small farmers. And the rest remaining 60 families in Palampur, they have land more than two hectares. And some of them have, few of them have around 10 hectares, more than 10 hectares. And all those farmers in Palampur who have land more than two hectares, they are called as medium and large farmers. So this is the distribution of the land among the farmers in Palampur. So the next topic which we are going to discuss is who will provide the labor? We know in farming there is someone who is going to work in the field and the work is really hard. There are different groups of the farmers in Palampur. The first group is of small farmers. In case of small farmers, who is going to work in the field? Who is going to provide labor? They work in their fields themselves along with their family members. They don't hire any labor. This means they provide labor to themselves. Medium and large farmers. Medium and large farmers, who is going to work in their field? They hire small farmers and landless people of the Palampur. They work as a farm laborers in the fields of medium and large farmers. The large farmers pay them. They pay them weights and those can be in the cash or kind. After a hard working day, they may give some vegetables, a kg of wheat or a small amount of money. One important point. In Palampur, the work is not regular for the farm laborers. They may be employed for a day, for a week or a, for a particular season. They are mostly the victims of seasonal unemployment where they are unemployed for many months in a year. 
and the number of workers, the number of laborers is very high as compared to the work available there. What happens because of this, there is heavy competition for the work. The rates set by the government, they are paid less than that because the workers, the laborers are more as compared to the work available there. There is heavy competition for the work. The next topic is capital needed in farming. So if we talk of small farmers or medium farmers or large farmers, how they arrange their capital? They need different inputs for their farming in terms of working capital and fixed capital or simply we can say physical capital. So how they arrange this for themselves, for the farming? In case of small farmers, they borrow money. Okay, let us discuss first small farmers. They borrow money. From whom they borrow? They borrow from large farmers, money lenders, or the traders. At very high rate of interest. And they are put under great distress in repaying that loan. So this can be understood by a story of Savita. Savita is a small farmer. She has a land less than two hectares and she needs an amount of 3,000 rupees to arrange the fertilizers, repair her tools for the farming. She estimates a total amount of 3,000 rupees. Now, being a small farmer, she goes to one of the large farmers of the village that is Tejpal Singh. Tejpal Singh agrees to give her loan, but he sets some conditions. Under those conditions under which he agrees to give her loan, condition number one, the rate of interest for this money will be 24%. Condition number two, repaying time will be just four months. In four months, she has to repay this loan back. Condition number three, during she has promised Tejpal Singh that she is going to work on the agricultural field during the harvest season at the rate of 100 rupees per day, which is less than the minimum weights. So once she agrees on these three conditions, then Tejpal Singh will give her the loan. She doesn't have any choice. Giving extra interest, repaying time very less, she will be always under stress in repaying this loan. This is the condition of the small farmers. Now, on the other hand, the condition of medium and the large farmers. Let us talk about the large farmers. How they arrange their capital? What do they do? Whatever they produce is there in the field, first they keep for themselves. The extra produce is called as surplus. This surplus is sold in the market, they earn money from this and they keep this money as saving. And the same money is used for the next season's capital, for the investment, whether we talk of fertilizers, pesticides, seeds, anything or tools. So they are not put on any, uh, under any stress in arranging their capital. So they arrange their capital from their own savings. So this was about how the small farmers and large farmers arrange their capital. Now the last topic we are going to discuss of this chapter is the non-farm activities. Around 25% of the people are associated with non-farm activities in Palampur. What are those activities? We are going to discuss one by one. The first activity is dairy. They have buffaloes in the village and the milk from these is collected there are two traders from Shahpur who have set up a collection come chilling center in Rai Ganj from where this milk is transported to the various cities and towns. Another activity is small scale manufacturing. This is done on very small scale in Palampur and less than 50 people are associated with this. And you, this is usually done at home or in the field. One more activity in the Palampur is that is transport. Earlier in the first topic, we discussed that there are different transport available in the Palampur, which includes Tonga, Jeep, truck. What is the work of this transport? 
They carry people from one place to another place and they also transport goods from one place to another place and in between they earn a small profit. This is one of the fast growing uh, sectors in the Palampur. One of the boy in the Palampur has started a computer center. His name is Kareem. In his computer center, he has employed two girls from the village who have done degree in the computer application. Now the large number of students are attending his center after the school hours. One more activity that is the shopkeeping or we can say the shopkeepers of the Palampur. They are the traders of Palampur. They go to the cities, to the wholesalers and there they purchase different kinds of products. Rubber, pencil, wheat, rice, toothpaste and they sell these products on their shops in Palampur. Some of them have open shops near the bus stop where they are selling the eatables. So these are some of the non-farm activities which are carried in Palampur. So we are done with this chapter. I hope that you have understood uh, these topics of the chapter, the story of village Palampur. Uh, we are going to meet again, inshallah, in the next chapter, that is people as resource. We are going to uh, have more videos on that chapter. Till then, stay blessed.